Hello. My name is Falk Schwendecke. I'm the director of the Department for Oral Diagnostics, Digital Health and Health Services Research here at the CHIT University of Medicine in Berlin, Germany. I have just been appointed to that position about six months ago and before that I was an associate professor at the same university, mainly focusing on operative and preventive dentistry. I became an IADR member, I think it was in 2012, right after entering my university career. At that point, I was situated in Kiel at the Baltic Sea in northern Germany, and I visited the first IADR for me in Seattle, if I'm not mistaken. I was quite impressed about the size and the scope and the quality of the presentations and also the side program. I found this very, very interesting to meet many people in various different formats and to allow networking and to basically put faces to all the names you read and um, all the different topics we engage with on a daily basis. My research at that time has been, as I said, mainly focused on operative and preventive dentistry. And my first and probably until some years ago, biggest topic was and still remains to be carriers management. So I'm very active in cariology. I'm also a member of the cariology group of the IIDR, as well as the evidence-based dentistry network and also the e-health network. Now I will come to this in a second. And in cariology was mainly carries tissue removal, carries excavation. And I focused on that quite from the beginning on because I found it very interesting that in opposite to what I learned in dental school, there seems to be alternative ways to manage dental caries, even cavitated caries lesions. So the term of incomplete caries removal was very provocative at that time and very interesting to me. And the first thing I did was I wrote a systematic review and a meta-analysis. And it's a funny story because it leads to my first JDR paper as well. We submitted that systematic review and meta-analysis on incomplete caries removal to caries research. And obviously we got I don't know, maybe the wrong reviewer, you all know how it happens, but that reviewer said that the paper should, of course, and very swiftly be rejected because we didn't consult and coordinate with the authors of the Cochrane Review at that time. And the Cochrane Review, and that was by, just by coincidence, was published some weeks afterwards. So it never got accepted in Carrie's research. It was sent away very, very swiftly. And we thought it was a good paper, it was a good review, and we submitted it to the Journal of Dental Research. And after some rounds of revisions, they eventually took it. And I think it's until now one of my most cited and read papers. And it's still one of the reference papers in that field. And by now, I myself am an author of the new Cochrane Review on this topic, the updates since 2013. Of course, a lot of studies have been published in the field, and hopefully that Cochrane Review will be published very soon. But uh, don't worry, I have not been asked to review papers on systematic reviews on caries tissue removal, so I'm not rejecting anything related to our Cochrane review. So that was my first JDR paper. I published very regularly in JDR. We've been very lucky with, with that. I think we have a good track record there. And since 2017, I think, I'm also a member of the editorial board since 2019, an associate editor in the Journal of Dental Research, which is obviously an honor, I think, it's something which makes me very happy, very proud, and it's very, very interesting. Most of the papers I see now come either from cariology, but they also reflect how my career changed over the last years. I worked over the time not only in cariology and preventive dentistry, also a lot in periodontology, for example, but also in epidemiology, public health, health economics, and health services research. That has been something which I took up together with a master's degree I took, a postgraduate education parallel to my PhD thesis, and I uh, acquired a master's degree from the University of Manchester in the public health in 2015. And that was very helpful for me to go into that field of public health, health economics. And since then, we really pushed that field quite a lot. I think we are very, very widely read and cited when it comes to health economics and dentistry because it's obviously something not many groups have done and we've been really pushing it also with books and uh, book sections and so on because i think in medicine that field has evolved quite a lot in wise and dentistry we're just at the beginning there our methods are very very restricted so far our data that's usually the biggest issue is even more restricted and i think getting the right data to inform more policy focused analysis is, is a big challenge but it will be the future of 
one branch of dental research, certainly. Another thing which we took up, basically coming out of that review, I, I cited and I discussed with you is the field of meter research. So for some years, very closely with a colleague here from Berlin, Gerd Gerstemeyer, we very intensively assess the quality, the robustness, the quantity of various data in, for example, restorative dentistry, but also in cardiology and other fields. We looked for industry sponsorship bias and a lot of things many people in medicine found interesting, but in dentistry, people hadn't done that so far. And um, that's still at my heart. Uh, and I'm still very active in that field here in Germany. I'm part of the medicine evidence-based network, basically. And um, I'm, the standard bearer for dentistry in that network and I think that's very important. I know the debate about systematic reviews and I agree with the people that say there are too many and many of the reviews also state something which is not very helpful to the practitioner that we should have more original studies which is basically also a task for us as researchers to not only state that we need more studies but also to conduct them which is something we did for example we have three or four randomized controlled trials running or concluded over the last three years here in our center so we try to not only do secondary research but also add to the secondary research data field with primary data um, and something which also came up from using data and working with data quite a lot is to be interested in something I increasingly tend to term data dentistry or data driven dentistry. I think it's very important that we as dentists work more with the data we have and actively engage into gaining more data and Starting with a project in 2017 where I met a very nice and capable colleague of mine, Dr. Joachim Kreuz, who's now my head data scientist here in my department. We really started that field and there are not many groups so far with doing this and um, we work with big data, claims data, machine learning, artificial intelligence, deep learning, computer vision. So we really try to, to engage very systematically into making the most out of data. We work together with the WHO and the ITU on standards for AI, artificial intelligence in dentistry and that is also a field which I plan together with health services research and of course diagnostics which is at the heart of my department here as well when it comes to clinical research and dentistry we are we will and we are trying to push that more and to work on these fields more in the future and so far it looks very good we have a very cool young team of data scientists here very diverse and savvy and eager to to work on dental data and uh, i think dentistry is a very very interesting field for data scientists because we have a lot of data. We have data from the same patient from different sources, photos, radiographs, clinical data, history data. We see our patients regularly, so we have longitudinal data. Um, all of that is very interesting for data science, for coming to an age where hopefully we are learning more about the individual patient, allowing us to provide them with a very personalized and precise diagnosis and treatment plan and um, thereby also being more preventive and hopefully engaging the patient more into managing his health, something which we call participatory dentistry. And these four things, the four Ps, precision dentistry, personalized dentistry, preventive dentistry, and participatory dentistry, that is something which I think in the long term at the horizon is very interesting, the P4 dentistry. And uh, we are trying to contribute a little bit to that. I will hopefully, nobody knows, be at the next IRER. Um, I'm not sure if, if it will happen in person. I will be there online. I'm very, very sad that the last IRER in Washington uh, fell flat. I think it was just because nobody at that point had any chance to prepare an online Congress. I think that will be very different now with a hybrid Congress planned. Um, I hopefully will have a symposium there and depending on what we produce, probably also a short presentation or a poster. And certainly if it happens, my team will also contribute with a number of um, studies, probably from the field of AI and data dentistry, but also from, for example, prediction modeling, risk modeling and or diagnostics. The future, the future, there's one question about the future of dentistry here in this uh, short notice I was asked to, um, to basically follow or to cover. That's hard to tell, but I think I, try to, to basically chisel out a little bit of what I think is part of the future. I think dentistry will be far more data-driven and dental oral and craniofacial research will also be more data-driven. We will be able to use the data we have better. We will be able to gain data more targeted and thereby also reduce research waste. And overall, I think what we also will learn is that in times where 
certainly in the post-COVID era, taxpayers' money will be a resource not flowing endlessly and taxpayers' expectations and the society's expectations towards research also being more targeted towards, in medical research, clinical gains, clinical benefits for the patient or the healthcare system, we will see more accountability for what we do. We will be driven more by standards, by the evidence, by something which many people see as a threat, and especially in the exploratory sciences and the basic dental research, that might well be. Um, and I think we need freedom there to explore new avenues and to go down more new routes. But when it comes to more applied and um, basically clinically focused research, we will see more accountability by having our studies being scrutinized for the quality, their transparency, their robustness, the generalizability of our findings and so on, the rigor of what we do. And I think dentistry should, should prepare for that. We should be the ones who basically contribute to these standards, who decide jointly with other stakeholders about the rules of our research and thereby guide our field to becoming better in the next 10, 15 years than we are right now. We're already quite good. We have lots of different research streams and thousands of active researchers, but I think we need to get better, even better, and by engaging into various initiatives which are out there, we can do that. And I'm calling everybody to, to join these initiatives. As I said, in, in the field, I'm lately interested AI and dentistry. We are trying to do this and everybody who wants to join us, just contact me. I hope I will see you next year. And otherwise, I wish you a very peaceful and healthy end of the year and a hopefully good or with some chance, hopefully even better 2021 than 2020. Bye-bye.